billion years, evolution has taken a very complex trajectory. The species have evolved, adapted to changes that have happened on Earth, and today a large number of species coexist on the Earth. In the first two episodes of this series, we talked about the evolution from the very beginning. The anaerobic life forms through the great reptiles. Mass extinction we have seen has wiped out a large number of species. Some have survived through these natural catastrophes. We also traced the history of drift of continents from a supercontinent to its present form. Is there any proof of this drift? Many bits of evidence support the belief that the continents once belonged to a single giant land mass that later broke up and drifted apart. Watch this world map, restoring the continents to their original position. You could recognize how Africa and South America, including their continental shells, fit together snugly. Another piece of evidence lies in fossils. Identical remains of certain plants and animal species have been found on continents that present day are separated by oceans. Glossopteris was a plant very similar to seed forms bearing large tongue-shaped leaves. Fossils of Glossopteris have been found in India, South Africa, Australia, South America, and even Antarctica. This suggests all these places might once have been covered with similar vegetation. It is rather difficult to reconcile that seeds of Glossopteris could have been carried by wind across such huge seas. Animal fossils too suggest that the distant habitats once lay side by side. A fossil reptile, Mesosaurus, has been found in Brazil and in South Africa. It was a freshwater animal and could not possibly have crossed the Atlantic Ocean on its own. Several groups of animals still alive today are found in both America and Africa. One is a type of earthworm found at the tip of South America and the tip of South Africa. It is hard to imagine an earthworm crossing the Atlantic Ocean. But if these were once connected, then the distribution of this earthworm is much easier to explain. Probably same as the story of the common garden snail which is found on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. The continents are still moving. North America is moving away from Europe and Africa at a rate of two centimeters a year. At the same time, Africa is swinging slowly you have just seen the computer generated simulation. India is drifting and pushing into Asia. But it is moving at a very, very slow speed. That is about one or just two centimeters a year. 
That is the growth rate of my nails. Now, it's very difficult to sense or measure this drift in my lifetime. Over millions of years, these small plate movements dramatically changed the face of the Earth. About 55 million years ago, the temperature of Earth peaked. And it is during this period of greenhouse warming that subtropical forests extended themselves to Arctic region. And then about 50 million years ago, Fungi breakup ended up, and new cycle of continental collisions began. Africa hit Europe. Continental compression led to the widened ocean basin, which lowered sea level. Australia separated from Antarctica and began its northward trip. And ice remained on Antarctica, separating it from Madagascar, and closing Tethys Ocean traveling more than 7,000 kilometers. The Indian fleet rammed into the Eurasian fleet. The enormous force of this titanic collision, thrusting up, folding and buckling, formed the long chains of fold mountains, all the way along the boundaries between moving plates, uplifting the Himalayas, to a towering height. Another fold mountain range that has formed through a similar process, that is a collision between Africa and Europe, is Alps. The seas, lakes and rivers were teeming with life. North Europe, Asia, and North America. With the spread of the grassland about 25 million years ago, free from the shadow of the dinosaurs, warm-blooded mammals flourished to their greatest variety on the earth. Sharp saber-toothed cats of the size of lion lived in North America. Ancestors of even toad camels and odd toad rhinoceros roamed North America and Europe. Grazing antelopes is spread across the plain. Elephant 
animals like mammoths roam the prairies and forests. Some of the greatest animals, whales capable of diving great depths for long period, descended around this time in the marine environment. Ancestors of monkeys or the anthropoid apes evolved about this period. They took refuge in the tree. the only ape found now in India appears. By about 20 million years ago, Australia had reached its current position, that is, northward from Antarctica. By about 7 million years ago, the Greenland had been covered by ice. Africa moved northwards to enclose the Mediterranean, stopping flow of water into North Atlantic. Glaciers formed on Greenland and the temperatures dropped sharply. Sea level dropped further. By about 3.5 million years ago, South America and North America were connected by land. An American subcontinent had taken its present day shape. The present geological period, which is known as Quaternary period, began with Pleistocene era, which began around two million years ago. The earth became much cooler and the climate became dry. And the distribution of plants and animals shifted towards equator. In the process, large birds and mammals became extinct in North and South America and also in Australia. About 20, 25 million years ago, it was time when hominids, human-like creatures, almost human, a family of upright walking primates, Australopithecus, having a brain as big as a chimpanzee's, roamed the tropical rainforest of Africa. They are believed to be our ancestors. Probably one line of evolution gave rise to Homo habilis, that is, humans skilled with tools. With large brain and dexterous hands, they started making tools of stone. Probably they also communicated to a limited extent through speech. They lived a wandering life in savannas of East Africa. Unlike Homo habilis, 
whose fossils remains have been found only in Africa, the fossils of Homo erectus have been found from Africa to as far as China, Java and Indonesia, which is why he is sometimes known as Java man. The smarter Homo erectus had mastered the use of fire and learned to live in caves. And then some 80,000 years ago emerged Homo sapiens, Neander Hellenesis, popularly called Neanderthal. They survived along the edge of the glaciers over much of Europe and Asia. They were short and stocky with low ridge brow. The Neanderthals were highly successful hunter gatherers with a complex social structure that died out. No one knows why. Many hominid species evolved. But only one survived migration from Africa to northern part of the globe, and that was Homo sapien, man the wise. <laughs> Having evolved, they became more erect. They had bipedal gait, short, stocky body built, with the sparse body here, that retained body heat, and wore animal skins to cover the body. They were skilled hunters. Their brain size increased dramatically over the last half million years enabling them with greater maneuvering skills, ability to use language, competitive survival adaptability, capability to utilize the natural resources, and complex social order. And became the only members of the genus Homo on the planet mankind. About 18,000 years ago, at the peak of the last great ice age, glaciers frosted North Europe, North America, and Antarctica. One third of the world's land resembled the ice-covered landscape of Antarctica. Ice caps grew to three times their present volume. Water logged in ice transformed the familiar contours of continental outlines. The lowering of sea level to the extent of about 100 to 150 meters exposed the continental shelves and it also exposed a bridge which was made out of land between Asia and America. During the next 8,000 years, temperatures increased, ice melted, Glaciers receded, the level of the sea rose, and the atmosphere on Earth became humid and warmer. This long-term cycle of freezing and thawing appears to be linked to changes in Earth's orbit from circular to elongated over a period of 100,000 years. The position of the continent as of today is also a temporary one. The map of the world of the future would be as strange to us as the map of the past is. From what we have seen through time and history and from what we know about the present day earth, the life has been astonishingly adaptable and resourceful. Species rise and fall, increase and decline, flourish and perish. Given this tenacity, millions of years of evolutionary adaptation and chances of survival in an 
unpredictable environment. It is possible that life actually started on Earth several times, but was wiped out by impact on each attempt. The web of life connects the smallest bacterium to the giant red wood to the veins and the delicate balance has been created and developed over a period of millions of years. Despite mass extinctions, some of these species have remained nearly in their original form. If the geological time of 4.6 billion years is depicted to the compressed time of just 24 hours, then bacteria came at 10 zero zero hours. Flowers emerged at 23 35. Himalayas came on scene about just seven minutes ago. Ascent of man on earth happened at 23 hours 59 minutes and 30 seconds. Some like ourselves are relatively newcomers and so they are here only for a brief moment, just 30 seconds. As we have seen that the life goes through cycles of mass extinction and recreation, the most important question is as to when the next mass extinction is. Scientists believe that the time period of this cycle is about 26 million years. And biologists believe that we are approaching the sixth mass extinction. One of the major causes of next mass extinction could be the environmental degradation. But man has also acquired instruments of mass destruction, the pile of arsenal that could wipe out all the forms of life from this beautiful earth. But most worrisome are the acts of irrationality. Unless man starts using its intelligence, which all its predecessors lacked, and thinks and also acts rationally, the end could come sooner than later. And then nobody will come to save us. Nobody can help us.